We are out here on a gorgeous day, and we're going to talk about what? What did you want? Oh, <laughs> I thought you were getting my attention. It's a gorgeous day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <clears throat> we're going to talk about gardening. <laughs> I just I thought you were like, let's stop. Okay, now here we go. <laughs> Well, hey everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth. Live simple. Live free. Yep. We're sitting here in this beautiful day, like Elizabeth said, in front of our garden, which I've been working on. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not completely done with the covers yet. I've been working on them. I'm getting close. And there's stuff planted in all four of them yep. now. <clears throat> so we wanted to talk a little bit about why we're growing a garden. Take it away, dear one. <laughs> well, um... I, you know, I can remember when I was a little girl, my aunt, um, Doris, worked in a greenhouse. <clears throat> and whenever I would get to go over there and just see her when she was working there, and sometimes she'd kind of let me putter just a little, just working with all the plants and, and, and the feel of it and the smell of it and the earth and soil, it was, I loved it. And um, feeling the oxygen in the air <laughs> and being, being around my grandmother and her, her garden and all the fruit trees and anyway I, I just love um, gardening but I developed fairly severe arthritis many many years ago and when we've had gardens before way back you know good grief 30 plus, 40 40 well, 35 anyway. 30, 35 years at least ago um, <clears throat> you know back then I could kneel and we had raised you know uh, intensive bed garden and I could kneel and do all that but um, we didn't have place for a garden after that for a long time and then I got to where I couldn't kneel anymore so I kind of wasn't sure what to do I had to have something where I could I could reach it without killing my knees um, and and so um, I don't think Bill has really realized because I haven't been stressing it all that much but how dearly I have wished I could have a garden and um, you know a greenhouse or, or something and so we've been married almost 42 years and I didn't know until I started building these beds for her. How much she was looking forward to gardening. Yeah, yeah. I literally come out every day and just look at the plants and go, are you growing yet? <laughs> you know, and I'm enjoying my sweet potatoes coming up all green in the kitchen. And yeah, I just, like I said, I have perfectly nice gloves and I'm not even using them right now because just feeling the earth and planting things and watching it grow, fussing over it, being careful not to overwater. Um, yeah, no, I, I, um, I know that, that there's wonderful value in having fresh grown food. I mean, that it's just, it's wonderful. And it's a sense of independence, but I also just love it, so. So she loves it, and she's looking very much looking forward to it. Me, <clears throat> not so much. <laughs> I have a few kind of negative things to say about a garden, and she didn't even want me to say this, but I think I really need to. But I will end on a positive note, okay? So, <clears throat> but... Can I say something just real quick? Sure. And one of the reasons why I haven't really been adamant about how much I'd want to have one is that until we were in a situation where I could have something I could reach, it'd be him having to do all the, the that was stuff. That one of my points. You're, oh. you're stealing my thunder, dear. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, anyway, I'd put, plant some flowers in a pot every year, but anyway. I didn't mean to steal his thunder. I haven't but looked if, at his thunder list. If we were going to, we seem to be doing a lot of gardening videos all of a sudden, which was not what we originally did with our video, with our channel. But <laughs> if we were going to change our name, something to do with gardening, and it was up to me, <laughs> I would call it the reluctant gardener. <laughs> the reluctant gardener? The reluctant gardener, <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> when I think about gardening, I know many of you absolutely love it. I get comments all the time about people so excited about seeing what we're going to grow and how much you love it and how much you love working in the soil and seeing the, the plants come up and it's peaceful and, and in your zen zone and all this kind of stuff. Yep. I completely understand that. But I don't feel most of that. When I look at it, I just see work. I see a lot of work. I <laughs> <it> just see <laughs> I just see one more project that I have to add to my already too long list of projects. So I haven't been really looking forward to doing that. But when I realized how excited Elizabeth is about doing it, I realized that if I could somehow bring it up to the, to the level where she can reach it without bending over, she would be doing most of the work. Yep, happily. So, so these raised beds back here have been a huge project for me. 
Uh, but once it's done, it's done. I call it a labor of love. Yeah, and I am thoroughly enjoying how to see how much she is enjoying it. She planted those seeds and a couple of little things are just starting to come up now. And she's out there every day, oh, you know, <laughs> she's so excited. And that gives me great joy to see that. Yeah. But what that means now is that now that this is done, I expect that she's going to be doing the major amount of the work and I will be here to help yep. whatever needs to be done. But it's not my responsibility and that's a load off of my chest because yeah. she's going to be taking the main responsibility for that. So. And I don't have to kneel and I don't have to bend over enough to mess my head up. So it'll work. Right. I can do it. <clears throat> so there's one negative thing checked off. You're taking care of that. <laughs> okay. Um, security. This is another thing that I have mentioned numerous times in the past that as far as prepping goes, <clears throat> I have serious reservations about considering a garden as a serious prepping tool because if it gets really bad and the shelves are stripped bare of groceries in the grocery store, a couple days later our gardens are going to be stripped bare as well unless there's some security involved. And I don't see how you could stop that from you know people from robbing your garden unless you're going to sit there 24 7 with a shotgun first of all do you have one secondly would you be willing to use it i wouldn't yeah you not, know. not over so uh, no i i don't see it as, as a as a real serious um prepper tool one that when it gets really bad when it's only a little bit like right now we're in the in the middle of the covid virus and it's not that that uh no. desperate yet as food, far as food. food is still around right but if it gets really bad, I think security is a serious issue. Uh, so, what are we doing about that? Well, where we lived before, in our little tiny house, we were in the middle of a community. We had a, uh, our property was 50 by 100, and so houses all around us, and everybody could see. Well, our backyard was right on the big road. Yeah, and well, everybody could see everything that we grew. Little big road. If we did, we didn't yeah. grow anything, and that was one of the reasons. Now we're on an acre and a half. It's much more rural. Our garden is behind our house. There's one little place where you can see it from the road that we're going to be putting a fence up so you can't see it. And and the road is so much lower that it's going to be easy right, to we're obscure. Right, we're kind of up on a hill. So right. I think that that has taken care of most of my concerns of security issues for our garden. But I still say that for anybody that lives more suburban where you got neighbors around that can see what you're doing, I don't know what you're going to do when it gets really bad and the, and the shelves are stripped and people start raiding your garden. So hopefully we'll figure something out with the community to share or something. I anyway, that's one concern that you might consider if you're if gardening is part of your prepping uh, arsenal. Well, I mean, especially if they're com if someone's completely relying on it. Right. Well, for one thing, honestly, this I will throw this in to grow enough food to truly support a family only from a garden is a bigger a bigger project than most of the time we really realize. Right. I don't know that you can do that just with some container gardening to completely, you know, <clears throat> feed your whole family for a year. I, I don't see that. Right. It could be one strategy for having good fresh food. Right. Yeah. Another reason that I'm not really thrilled about tra about uh, the garden is because we do a lot of travel and I have been hoping to do more travel. And if we do travel for a couple of weeks at a time in our RV, the garden can survive that. But eventually I want to be able to take off in the RV and travel for the whole summer. And I just don't know how that would work if we're trying to, to grow a garden. I'll uh, work something out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will. <laughs> but that hasn't been resolved yet. But right now we can't travel over the summer anyway, as long as my father is with us. We're, right. you know, we're gladly taking care of him. So we can travel for two weeks at a time, but we can't take two or three months like I would like to and right. leave him that for that long. And right now we can't do it anyway. Yeah, so that's, that's not an issue with my dad right now, and that's not an issue this summer anyway because of COVID. We can't travel anywhere anyway. Yeah. So. <clears throat> can, can I say something? Don't lose your train of thought. Yeah. Um, I think in a situation like that, especially if we were gone during like the heat of the summer, except for things like lettuces and things like that, a lot of your crops are just sort of growing during that time. But anyway, I'd probably just find somebody um, that would want to just come and keep a little bit of an eye on it um, and take whatever they want from the garden. Um, I, I'd figure out a way if yeah, we had to but, be traveling. But once again, that depends completely on how long we're going to be gone. Yeah.
So as I was editing this, I realized there was one more thing that I wanted to say about travel that I forgot when we were doing the video. And that is, if the food shortages should get bad enough in the future, we probably won't be traveling anyway. And if that's the case, we will be very happy to be home and even happier to have a garden that's already established and we know what we're doing and it would be easy to expand on it even if we had to do that. So as far as travel, if we really need the garden, probably wouldn't be traveling anyway. So anyway, there's that. Okay, end of my negative stuff. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, it all comes down to the question of why are you prepping? You know, what is your goal here? What do you think is going to be the situation that causes uh, prepping to be necessary? Short term or long term? Yeah, different circumstances. Right. right. When we <clears throat> first started prepping, that was a long time ago too. Six, seven years ago, um, I started prepping because I believed and I still do, that we are in danger of having the a collapse of the dollar because of the uh, national deficit. And also the fact that many countries in Europe are also running huge national deficits and the whole thing could come down financially and uh, that could disrupt all kinds of things. And so that's why I was prepping. But I would expect that, that would some sort of a monetary system would be reestablished uh, maybe within three months and certainly within a year. Yeah. In the meantime, you'd you know possibly be looking at like insanely high inflation. Right. You know, like in in like Venezuela, where you know they just got money floating around in the gutters in the streets because you know it takes like a it'd be like a million dollars to buy a loaf of bread. Yeah. It becomes yeah. meaningless. But eventually, that has to be reset. The system has to be reset and reestablished. And so, just prepping without a garden. Is possible to get through a year you know if that's your goal if that's what you think is going to be an issue you plan it carefully that was my goal and that's we could have survived through a year of it like that but now in the past couple years I've learned about something called the grand solar minimum I've done a few videos about this and uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about I'll put um, a link to our playlist about the grand solar minimum this is talking about uh, serious cold weather crop losses that are going to be happening for years to come. And we're not talking like everything gets sub-zero. We're talking about a just just enough of a drop in temperature right? to affect the ability to grow. Um, basically everything above the 45th parallel, which is right about at New York City and Chicago, anything above that, for every half degree that the average temperature drops in the, in the earth, we lose 10 days of growing season. Wow. So if it drops, if the average temperature drops two degrees, that's that's 40 degrees of growing season and anything above the 45th parallel won't be able to grow anything and that could create a worldwide famine so and then now on top of that in the middle of this COVID thing I'm sure if you're listening to the news just recently you're hearing about the uh, the coming shortages of meat because the packing plants are all shutting down and that's going to cause uh, shortages in meat and also in dairy for months to come or more because a lot of the cattle that should be slaughtered for, for beef is just being destroyed instead. So I think when you take the problem with the food shortages because of the, the COVID virus and then you add onto that that we're still heading into the grand solar minimum, I think that any problems with food shortages is going to be more, much longer than a year. So this garden to me is now become essential and I'm very happily doing it because people have told me, and I agree, if you, if you just have prep, you know, food, you're eventually going to run out. Then what are you going to do? If I'm prepping for a year, I wasn't concerned, but for longer than that, yeah, we could eventually run out. So uh, we'll be using the garden now to supplement. If, if the food shortages happen, like I expect, we'll be eating Thrive Life and our other uh, food preps that we have, and we'll be using the garden to supplement heavily and to make our food storage last considerably longer. So bottom line is that I'm very happy to be here in Virginia. I'm very, very happy in this much more rural area. And I'm very happy to have a place that, that we can garden 
and to see the joy that Elizabeth has mm -hmm. with gardening and to know that uh, we are much better situated for long-term food storages by having our food preps and by having our garden. So the reluctant gardener is very happy to be gardening. <laughs> yeah. um, Molly, you know, our daughter-in-law told me something that was very touching to me. Um, I'm not sure where she heard it, but that, uh, and of course, and I'm not trying to compare what's going on now with what happened in the, um, the flu that hit in like uh, 1918. That was devastating, unbelievable um, deaths from that flu, um, from the Spanish flu when it hit um, right after World War I. Unbelievable. I, I guess they're estimating at least 50 million people died. Um, but during that time, there was apparently one family that in this community, this village, had just not really been affected by the flu. And um, they ended up with this great big old patch of sweet potatoes out beside their house. And um, they were able to kind of feed that entire village during the real crisis time from sweet potatoes, from their great big sweet potato patch. And um, I just thought that was really neat. You know, I, you may have been seeing on Facebook um, little, you know, things they're putting up there now where if, if everybody's yard looked like a little garden, maybe there wouldn't be so many hungry people, you know, in the world. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, anything that we can do to, um, you know, as people have been, you know, telling us for ages, and, and I kind of really wanted to, um, anything that we can just grow gives us, we don't have to have the food that everybody else needs um, as much because we've got our own. And once again, just like with us not having to go try to somehow move heaven and earth to get toilet paper because we always stay a little bit ahead on toilet paper. Um, if, if you're doing some things that can take care of yourself, then it's a lot easier to make sure there's going to be enough for everybody else. Right. You know, or like in the case of the sweet potato patch, to maybe share, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, now, you know, you'll notice I have a weird garden um, because I'm not growing peas, I'm not growing beans, green beans, I'm not growing um, a lot of things that people are just, are considered tomatoes. I mean, we got a little bit of tomatoes just for Bill. But that's up on the front front porch. But we're just not growing um, a lot of the things that are sort of staples for a garden. But that's because, um, except for those couple of tomato plants out front, everything I'm growing here is things that I can eat. And so, um, and I'm really trying to grow things that are a little harder to get in a freeze-dried form, you know. And um, so, I'm really trying to make sure that whatever I am growing, um, we would be able to, you know, I can use and, and hopefully have some of it that I can can store over some of the cold weather, you know, right. so. Um, but yeah, and I, he, he has made this not only so possible for me because now I've used the beds and planted in them so I, I know I can reach everywhere and I don't have to bend over long enough that it messes up the stroke issues that I have. Um, you know, the, this, the technology that I use in my socks and in, inner soles, that box life has really made a difference, but I still have to be you know, careful to not just stay bent over for a long time. So the height is excellent for that. I can sit on the edge of it. I don't have to kneel, you know. Um, I can reach all of it. And then to know that I can just put these covers down on it and I'm not going to be having birds and deer and rabbits and stuff eating. Um, the bees can still get in. Um, I'm delighted, absolutely delighted. It's easy to water with the, the cage parts down. And um, I'm, just, I, I, I'm just waiting to see things grow. I'm so impatient, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm I'm grateful that we can do this, and uh, apparently we do have blue uh, blackberries and raspberries kind of all around the edges, and my little fig tree is hanging on. You know, it's not going to do anything major for a long time, but it's growing one new leaf since we bought it. Right, but that leaf is healthy, and as long as it stays alive and gets good roots and gets some leaves going, you know, that's all I really ask for at this point. And um, so, anyway, I've, I've had to be careful not to plant too early. You know, we have a, a frost coming up here, apparently, and it's a good thing I can just bring the tomatoes in and I don't have anything else growing right now that, you know, thankfully I'm, I'm waiting like I'm supposed to to put my sweet potatoes out. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I've been glad he's been willing to work on this with me. So, yes, it's a good idea to have a garden. It's a good idea in terms of what could be going on in the world. But for me, I'm just excited to watch things grow. I might even stick some little fairy village buildings in all through and... Excuse me? <laughs> he doesn't know about that. <laughs> but 
I think it would be fun. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> He's got that what <laughs> look on his face. I'm still learning new things about her. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're just the little buildings and the little, you know. Anyway, I might not put fairies. I might put frogs or something. But it's a girl thing. So. All right, everybody. <laughs> There you have it. Yeah. Why we grow a garden. She's excited about it. I'm being dragged along. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the bed where I've got lettuce and oh, broccoli and, and um, like a lot of odds and ends in this one. See how easy this thing is to open? And now I easily have access everywhere. I got guys coming up here. I believe that's cauliflower. And this is lettuce here. I got mescaline, I got romaine um, coming up here. Yeah, I think so. I'll look at my map. But anyway, um, and I got some stuff coming up here, so I'm excited. Oh, somebody's coming up over. No, that's a leaf, never mind. So, neat onions. Yeah. So it's early on, but things are growing. And look how easy this is. So now bees can fly in, sunshine, rain. But no deer, no bunny rabbits, no birds, no wiggly crawly critters. Okay, over here I'm gonna um, just keep an eye out. I'm not planting my watermelon or my um, honeydew yet, but I do have pumpkin planted over there and it hasn't come up at all yet. So over here though, we're just getting this one put on. But over here, what was it you just said? <laughs> Bill just told me, let's go She's over and- She's got a whole row of anchovies growing right there. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He goes, let's go look at the, uh, what are the anchovies? <laughs> this is beets, by the way, anchovies. And I know they're too thick. I'm gonna be thinning them out, but I just wanna give them a chance to be coming up and then I'll, I'll get them kind of thinned out. But I got beets here and, and turnips and carrots and um, why can I never think of the fourth one? There's beets, turnips, carrots, and um, yeah, parsnips. Yes, parsnips. And then once I start with my sweet potatoes, it's gonna take that whole half right there. So, but these these are coming up over here. So, all righty. Well, dear, I guess that's about it. Yeah. I'm enjoying that it looks like actual leaves are coming out on the trees now. Yep. And my, my dogwood's going from a white, flower-covered beautiful thing to a nice leaf-covered beautiful thing. That's good. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to our rantings. Yes. <laughs> Live simple. Live free. You be blessed. Yes. We'll see, we'll see you next time. Yep. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye-bye.